everybody welcome back to my channel this is Aurelius and I'm bringing you something else something interesting uh, I had several questions asked by some of my viewers um, in relation to the Marine Corps I appreciate you asking questions you making comments um, I appreciate that a lot uh, it puts me in a busy uh, situation where I have to comply and I would love to do that for you guys okay there are five questions. Uh, question number five. Somebody asked me if you can join the Marine Corps um, when you're fat, um, when you're overweight. Uh, there are a lot of people that have a lot of enthusiasm to join the Marine Corps. But really, if you are fat and you join in, somehow you get in, um, you are going to be humiliated. Uh, they're going to make an example out of you. You are going to be mistreated until you lose weight. I don't know if, you, if any one of you have watched the movie Full Metal Jacket. That is exactly what happens. Remember that, that those groups, uh, the group in that film, they were supposed to be Marines. And that is exactly what happened. You get humiliated. They're going to be pushing you around to make you lose weight. You are going to be disgraced even after graduation. If you end up graduating from the Marine Corps and after that, and you're fat, that is not a goal. You always going to be uh, an example uh, to humiliating you for being fat. So I suggest you go work out and lose weight if you want to join the Marines, because they're not going to take it. They're going to make you feel really, really uncomfortable to the point that you're going to end up quitting because you join in like that and uh, they don't like that. All right, if you got it clear, I hope you got it clear. I don't mean to insult anybody that's overweight. I really have no business in doing that. But as far as the Marine Corps goes, they, they're they not gonna take that. They, they do different over there. And as far as me, I respect anybody however they look. As a civilian, anybody can wanna, wanna look however they wanna look and I'm okay with it. Um, okay, question number four. All right, question number four. Question number four, somebody asks, what is this deal about crossing ranks? All right, imagine yourself, you are uh, at attention with a number of people, say 30 or 50 people at attention in the Marine Corps, right? And somebody is making a speech, usually the drill sergeant, usually the gunny, usually a, 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 uh, a captain in the Marine Corps. Somebody in that position, where they have to make a speech. And if you cross right in between, if you're walking right through that section, in between the gap between the, the commanding officer who's speaking and the crowd who are our attention, and you cross that, that's a big deal. You go into mass for that. Now, and mass is not church mass. In the Marine Corps, mass is a military, uh, a military court. That's what that is. So every time you hear the word mass in the Marine Corps, you go into court. And the core is, is military core is based on the captain, the captain who is in charge. And he's going to give you recommendation times for making that, um, making that, um, that crossing that you did right in between them. And usually go, it, it, they take away your wages um, and they take away uh, some of your days. Usually they take away 30 days, so they call it 30-30, which means 30 days uh, they will take away from your from your um, time off. You're gonna be on base or you're gonna be in a ship or wherever it is that you're at. You're gonna be there for 30 days. You cannot go anywhere. If you do, more trouble will come to you. Chances are you probably go to jail for something like that, for breaking that particular rule. Just, stay, just stick around for those 30 days and then uh, you can go on and do whatever you were doing before. But at least, hopefully, you learn the lesson. You cannot cross ranks. You cross ranks, it's a big deal. Oh, it's a big deal in the Marines. So I suggest you guys don't do that. All right, question number three. Question number three is based on, on accomplishing tasks. Now, a task can be something as simple as cleaning something. Uh, like cleaning your bed, doing your bed. Uh, your bed is a very important thing, even though it's not a big deal to you as, as a civilian. But in the Marine Corps, you have to do your bed, and it has to be in a 45-degree angle. 
people that know how to do the bed, they understand what it is that I'm talking about. It has to be 45, 45. That means your, your pillow has to be at a 45, um, 45 degree. Your, your bed has to be uh, made at a 45 degree. I can't explain that to you real well, um, but I suggest you watch some videos about how to properly do your bed. Uh, and this is not just a, a, a task. It's a big deal in the Marines. You have to make it, or you know what they do? They will grab your bunk or your bed and will throw it into the ground. And it will throw everything, whatever it is that you did, and you have to pick it up and you have to redo it all over again until the drill sergeant, um, until the drill sergeant is pleased with it. And that's exactly what they do. But what they're trying to do is that if something as simple as making your bed is wrong, when you go out into the marine, into the fleet sector, um, they expect you to finish your tasks no matter what. If you go to war, for example, and you have to, and you have to finish your task as far as a uh, uh, going to war and making sure that everybody uh, has already been taken or arrested or whatever. They're going to try to finish that task. And it does it to the Marine Corps. They don't care how many people die. They will bring more people in. One way or the other, they're going to accomplish that task. And they will accomplish that task because their main goal is to protect national security. Uh, is protect national security. Is protect our country from any any tyranny, any, anybody that wants to come in and, and want to hurt our country. Um, our job is to go above and beyond uh, to protect it to the point of death. If we have to die, then we die, but we die as Marines. And that is the belief. Uh, but no matter what, the Marine Corps will make sure that you have to accomplish your task and will finish your task. It doesn't matter if you die. To them, what matters is the task at hand. And some of you may see it as crazy, some of you may see it as honorable, but in the end, this is the reason why we don't have people bombing our country every day, because we're always looking at making sure that we bring the battle to them. If we bring the battle to them, they can't come here. We don't give, we don't give them time to come here. And that is uh, one of the tasks that Marines have. All right. We're gonna move into question number two. All right, this is question number two. Question number two, um, it says, um, somebody's asking, why do you need to take your hat off when you're in a building? Well, the reason why you take your hat off when you're in a building is because you don't have the flag, uh, or in this case, the ensign, we call it the ensign, what you guys call the flag. We, we don't have the ensign um, covering us. What's covering us is the building. So therefore, we don't have to wear the hat. And this is a, a, a type of culture that is punishable. If you don't take your hat off, you're gonna be told. And if you still wear the hat off inside, you're gonna be reprimanded for that. They're gonna take you back to mass, or in this case, the military court. And they're gonna give you. They're gonna take something out. I know. It's either wages or they give you time, in the in the you know on base. You can get out. And if you misbehave, they take you to the brig. And it's something so simple, but it's a big deal in the Marines. And you don't do it because you you. If you don't do that, you really don't respect the Marine Corps because we are. This is our culture. This is who we are. You don't take your your hat off because you're outside because you've been covered, because you have to be covered since you're respecting the ensign. It's almost like you're saluting the ensign whenever you're outside. But when you're inside a building, the ensign is not to be, the ensign is not seen, you know, and, and the ensign is a big deal for us, you know. Like, like I see Donald Trump hugging the flag, that's a big no deal, you know. You go to mass for something like that. You, 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 the flag is not your friend. The flag is not yours. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to everybody. So therefore, nobody has the flag. But because this president does what he does, uh, and and they allow him to, but I don't know why they allow him. Nobody says anything to him. There are so many rules that he breaks. In this case, the flag. For us, the flag is an emblem. For us, the flag is almost like the Jesus cross. You know, it's it's a very important thing that a lot of people have died to keep alive. And so therefore, you don't take your hat off uh, when you're outside because 
you're saluting your, in other words, your hat is saluting the flag at all times. But when you're inside a building, you're not. So therefore you can take off your hat, all right? So now you know a little bit more about taking your hat off and taking your hat off and on. All right, question number five. Question number five had to do with gunnies. Gunnies are like chiefs in the United States Navy. They're E7. Um, when I was in the Navy, I was E, uh, I was E5, which is a second class petty officer, and I was working on to become a first class petty officer. Um, but then I did the switch. I, I said that in my first video. Um, I did the package because I had already finished my bachelor's degree, and so I submitted it and I got accepted. Now, one thing about that is that. Jesus, it's really hard to get your bachelor's degree accomplished in the Marines because they keep you busy at all, I mean in the Navy or in the Marines uh, because they keep you busy at all times. You're always working, you're always doing so. It was really difficult for me to finish it, but I know I wanted to be an officer. I knew that I wanted it so bad. So therefore, I put a lot of time and effort to, to finish, to accomplish that. And um, well, but that's not the question. Let's go back to the question. The question was a gunny. I mean, the question was, um, why is the gunny always right? The gunny is always right because he's, al he's always taking it. He's always, no matter what, everything goes right or wrong, he's the one that's going to take it, so you need to follow his order. The, he gives you an order because the order probably comes from a, higher, from a higher command, and so he needs to pass it down to you, and it becomes a task to you. And so if you fail, that's all right because you fail under the orders of of the gunny but if you if you win it then you're gonna be recompensated for something like that whatever it is that the task was about so listen to your gunny and never tell him that he's wrong he's gonna always tell you he's right no matter what gunnies are always right even though they may be wrong but you don't need to care about that you need to just follow what the gunny says he knows what he's telling you what he wants you to do all right you guys uh, that's uh, five questions I hope you guys um, learn something about that if you have any questions or comment please leave them in my in my you know in my section down in the down in the screen um i really enjoy you guys watching my videos and and uh and uh, making comments please do more and uh, also please if you can subscribe i'm really interested in providing more uh information uh about other things that i want to do in, including if you have questions about the marine corps let me know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be very open and very honest about it. Um, once again, thank you for watching my videos and subscribe. And have a wonderful, wonderful night. Um, I know I am. Uh, and I'll see you in my next video.